Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. It was a landmark night for Rick Porcello in his last start on Tuesday in Chicago. Porcello pitched the first career game, first career complete game, giving up one earned run in nine innings. Porcello hoping to keep that going here tonight on a gorgeous night for baseball. Welcome to downtown Detroit. Game one of this four game set Tigers and Seattle Mariners. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, glad to have you with us as the Tigers begin a four game series here against the M's, trying to gain some more ground now on that uh, magic number as we count them down here. Rod Rick Porcello, what can you say about his last start? Well, and the Tigers really needed him because they had lost the series in the first two legs of that trip through Kansas City, also Boston. They had lost the first game to the White Sox in Porcello. Boy, did he step up. 13 ground ball outs. Porcello shouldn't change one thing here tonight against Seattle. All right. One positive for the Tigers. The bat of Alex Avila really after a rocky first half. He's hitting over 300 in the second half. Had a couple of big homers yesterday. You know, I don't mean this in a bad way, but it seems like he's finally woken up. I mean, the first half of the year, he just wasn't there. He was in between on the fastball and the breaking ball. If you take a look at all these swings, we're going to show you Avila. Look at the hands. The hands are starting to work again. He's always been blessed with really good hands through the strike zone, but he wasn't using those hands at the beginning of the year. He's catching that fastball out in front. When you hang him a breaking ball, he does damage with that pitch. He's using the entire baseball field, and that's why that batting average after the All-Star break is over 300. He's been tremendous. All right, after a short break, we'll send you back to the Call Sam Studios and join Matt Shepard. Coming up tonight, the Tigers hoping to beat Seattle here. And how about Alex Sevilla? He's had some big home runs this year. Game winners against Houston and Cleveland. And, of course, two more yesterday against the Royals. Tigers coming up next.
tonight it's the Tigers and the Seattle Mariners in town to start a four game series here on a gorgeous night for baseball albeit a little bit cool here at the ballpark tonight. And the Seattle starting lineup presented by the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers it'll be Dustin Ackley to start things off for the M's followed by El Monte and Seager Morales Ibanez and Smoke in the middle of the lineup Zanino Franklin and then the triune fell for the Seattle Mariners they are facing the right handed offerings of Rick Porcello and Rick Porcello probably coming off one of his better starts of his career five days ago against the White Sox his first major league complete game tons of ground balls they did not get many good swings against the Porcello sinker. Rick tonight presented by family heating cooling and electrical as Dustin Ackley leads it off. Ackley batting 256. He's hit three home runs this year playing out in center field tonight. He's played some infield as well for the Seattle Mariners. Porcello is a one pitch. And it's outside one ball and one strike. Last time we saw Ackley, he was their starting second baseman, but in the middle of May, they had to send him back down to the minor leagues for a month because he was struggling so badly in the big leagues. Now Porcello's 1 1 is ripped and just out of the reach of the second baseman into right field, and Fonte couldn't quite get there. Take a look at the Tigers' defensive alignment is presented by Beaumont Health System in the outfield. You got Tuliasa Sopo. Against the left hander this evening, Jackson in center, T Hunter. He is in right. Iglesias and Infante are up the middle. Miggy and Prince, they're on the corners, and the hot hitting Alex Avila catching his fourth consecutive game. Here is Abraham El Monte standing in. These are a vastly different looking. Bunch of Seattle Mariners than the bunch we saw back in early April when the Tigers played a three game series out of Safeco Field. Owen won the count on El Monte. He's playing right field for the Seattle Mariners and uh, Eric Wedge in his third season as the skipper of the M's. A 440 winning percentage for Seattle. They like El Monte. Yeah, they like his skill set and he's getting a chance to perform here in the month of September. Lamonte has hit safely in his last five. It's always bittersweet for managers uh, this time of year. Either you're in the situation like Jim Leland, where it looks like your team is headed to the postseason, or you're Eric Wedge and you're taking a look at a lot of really young players from the minor leagues. Jim Leland all bundled up tonight. He's got the sweatshirt going. The temperature game time is 62. Little bit of a breeze at the ballpark. He shows bunt and then apparently did not offer at it. Not only will he show bunt, but he will bunt. And since he's come to the big leagues, he has bunted or at least attempted to bunt for a base hit in every last one of his starts. Well, Monte spent seven years in the Yankees organization. Before he came over to the M's in a February trade with the New York Yanks. Wave and a miss. Good change up there by Porcello. He hung a breaking ball to Dustin Ackley, their leadoff hitter. Uh, and he got himself a base hit into a right field. But this is a well located change up. One and two on Abraham Almonte, Kyle Seeger. Has been one of their better offensive performers this year, waiting on deck. Rick in search of the ground ball here. The one two is strike three call. That'll work as well. His first strikeout of the ball game tonight. Real nice swing back fastball by Porcello. El Monte thought this ball was going to be out inside. It did start off the plate inside, but the natural action on the pitch for Porcello allowed it to get right back over the middle of the plate. Here's the number three hitter Kyle Seeger batting 272. Every strikeout that Rick Porcello gets these days, it's adding to a new career high. And Seeger's the perfect guy to get that ground ball double play against Porcello. He is a dead pull hitter. Everything that he hits usually is to right field and Guys that are pull happy have difficult times with the sinker ball. If he locates one down, he can get himself of that double play to get out of the inning.
In there for a strike on Seager. Here's an example of what I'm talking about regarding Kyle Seager. Doesn't use left field very often. Good player there, probably their best all around performer. Time called as Porcello delivered that last pitch. That is about as late as you can give time to a player than Seeger got right there from home plate umpire Chris Guccione. Porcello must think the Kansas City Royals are still in town. And you're really paying attention to Dustin Ackley over at first base, making sure he keeps his double play in order. Yeah, but the Tigers pitchers will not pitch in nearly the stress they have the last three days when Kansas City was here. Only 45 steals as a team for the Seattle Mariners. Off the outer edge, one ball, one strike on Seeger. Who back in the month of June had a 15 game hitting streak. It's been a kind of a streaky year for them or for him, but he has posted some of their better numbers. He's had an 0 for 17 stretch, an 0 for 21 stretch. Ackley let it off with a base hit, still at first base with one out. That'll get away from Avila, that'll advance the runner. Ackley taking a wide turn, but he will hold up. I don't know if Porcello's cleats got caught on the mound or what, but that was awfully awkward. Better look here exactly what happened. Two balls and one strike on Seeger. Kendry's Morales waiting on deck. Just underway here at the ballpark. The first of four between these two ball clubs. A little bit outside, and the count goes to three and one. There's the veteran Morales and one of their big power bats waiting on deck. In that last start. The complete game victory against the White Sox. Porcello scattered seven hits, struck out five, and walked only one in that game. Thirteen ground ball outs in that game for Porcello as well. Strike call. Three and two. Jim Leland finally gave Porcello a chance to go out there and complete a game, and he did so. Ackley at second with one out. Here's the 3 2. Fly ball left field. Hit pretty well. Tui Asasopo is back to the warning track. Runner tagging. Here comes Ackley to third. He's in there sliding. Seeger hit it deep to left center. Not deep enough though. Two gone. That'll bring out Morales. This is a Seattle team that by and large has struggled this year. They are 66 and 83, yet they are third in the major leagues in home runs. And Morales has hit 22 of them this year. He's knocked in 77 runs. Trying to drive in a two out run here in the first. And he shoots that one to center field or straight away and caught on a leap by Jose Iglesias in the edge of the grass. So Morales has a hit and an RBI taken away. Nifty glove work by Jose.
Nine at Comerica Park, the first of four between Seattle and Detroit. Tigers starting lineup tonight brought to you by the Southeast Michigan Four Dealers. No changes at the top. Jackson, Hunter, Cabrera in your top three spots. In the middle, you've got Fielder tonight playing first base. Martinez DHing. Omar bumped up to sixth in the lineup. Two Yasa Sopo, Avila, and Iglesias in the bottom three spots in the lineup, and they are facing the left handed offerings of Joe Saunders. And Joe Saunders, pretty good pitcher, looking for his 12th win. Uh, here in his 31st start, he's got a fastball that will get up to 93. He's got a nice little cut fastball he uses as well. The slider and the changeup are really good pitches. The slider for the left-handers and also the changeup to the right-handers. Austin Jackson will lead it off for Detroit, facing the 32-year-old left-hander, Joe Saunders. Tigers a very aggressive team on first pitch fastballs. That won't change if Saunders comes out trying to fill up the strike zone with a lot of fastballs. First pitch is high. One ball to no strikes on uh, Jackson, who is three for 12 so far in the homestand. 275 batting average for the Tigers' leadoff man. The 1 0 bounces in. Two balls, no strikes. Saunders goes 6 3, 215 out of Springfield, Virginia. Seattle signed him as a free agent in February before the Spring season started right back off the glove. It'll roll to the shortstop. Jackson is out by a step. One gone. Let's take a look at the starting defense by the Seattle Mariners this evening. It's presented by Tim Horton. Zibanez, Ackley, El Monte in the outfield. Trianfo, Franklin are up the middle. Smoke, Seeger on the corners. And Zunino is behind the plate. And what a play that was by Trianfo. Their shortstop. That ball redirected. Uh, by Saunders, the pitcher. Nice athletic play by their shortstop. Here is Torrey now with one out. And that is in for a strike. Two ninety five this year for Hunter, who again is trying to finish up above three hundred. And he'll line one to left. That'll help. For one out single for Torrey. Tigers have their first hit and base runner of the ball game. It's going to bring up Miguel Cabrera. Three fifty batting average now for Miggy. And he'll look at a ball outside. One ball and no strikes. Drill toward left center field. That's going to get down. Base hit. Hunter is on his way to third. He is in there standing up. And the Tigers are on the prowl early in this game with a couple of base hits. Not only do they have a couple of base hits, but Jackson should have had a base hit himself. Saunders able to get a piece of that ball. Their shortstop able to make a really nice play on Jackson, but Torrey and Miggy solid singles into left field. Both on the same pitch, the changeup. And apparently the Tigers are looking for that off-speed pitch out of the hand of Saunders this evening. So Cabrera's average starting to climb again now. He's hit safely in five straight, setting up an opportunity here for Prince Fielder. Lefty lefty matchup here, and Saunders this year has held lefties to a 220 batting average. Prince, though, batting a solid 280 overall this year. And again, reaching the 100 plateau, 102 RBIs. Here's the 1 0. That'll get away from the catcher. Zunino can't handle it. Torrey scores standing up, and the Tigers have a run. Both pitchers have uncorked a wild pitch in this contest in the very first inning. The one for Saunders, much more costly than Porcello's was in the top half of the first inning. Zunino, the catcher, really had no shot at getting over and getting in front of that breaking ball. Both 
Both runners advance. Man at second now. And a 2 0 count on Fielder. He'll watch that one into the glove for a strike, and the count goes to two and one. Saunders has given up more runs than any starting pitcher in the American League since the All Star break. And that is the 13th run now that he has given up in the first inning since the break. Here's the two one to Prince. Bouncing ball foul first base side. Level the count now two balls two strikes. Fielder's got that average again threatening to get near 300 again because he's hit safely in 12 of his last 14. And has really perked up this month. And the one thing that uh, he has done differently than he was doing at the be beginning of the year he is using the opposite field with much more regularity therefore the batting average uh, has perked up. Earlier this season it looked like Prince in his second year in the Tigers uniform was much more pull happy trying to hit home runs earlier in the season. Fielder fouls that one off to stay alive. Two and two the count remains with Martinez waiting on deck. Tiger setting up a run with a couple of hits. Hunter and Cabrera wild pitch. Scores the game's first run. Saunders is a former Angel. He began his career with the Angels. Spent parts of six years in Anaheim. In the air to center field where Ackley is coming over. That'll be the second out of the inning. So Fielder unable to advance the runner, and Cabrera will hold it second with two gone now as Martinez looks for the two out hit. Victor at 298. Four hits in the series against the Royals. That Royals team could really pitch. It slowed down quite a few of the guys for the most part in that three game series. Good staff, good bullpen. Royals tonight hosting Cleveland in Kansas City. The uh, Cleveland Indians coming into play. Five back in the division, but certainly uh, much closer in the wild card, which has tightened up considerably in the American League. Cleveland a half game back. There's a strike called on Victor. Martinez this year has knocked in 75. Cabrera is second with two outs. One ball, one strike. Tampa and Texas are actually getting together tonight. They are playing each other. Cleveland a half game back. You see the Tigers magic number at nine. They lead Cleveland by five in the central. Two balls and one strike. And now Martinez will step out as Saunders steps off. Victor has gotten that average near the 300 mark, largely due to a terrific second half, 364 since the All Star break. Here's the 2 1. Outside, three balls and one strike. 78 hits now post All Star break for Victor, which is three ahead of Hosmer and Hunter Pence of San Francisco as you look at your major league leaders. Rick Porcello has been given an early run, perhaps more here if Martinez can come through with a two out hit. A 
Robinson foul back out of play. Tigers over the next four days have to see an opportunity here. There was some thought that perhaps Felix Hernandez would pitch in this series, but he will not. They will get Iwakuma, who's had himself a dynamite year. He's a, good, he's a really good pitcher, Iwakuma. And his ranks in the top ten in a lot of really important categories as far as starting pitchers are concerned. Well, Victor's still waiting patiently on Saunders, who has slowed the pace considerably here. Now the 3 2. And he fought that one off in on his hands. Full count on Martinez. The Tigers a first inning run courtesy of a wild pitch. Omar Infante waiting on deck. Bouncing ball to short. Trienfeld will throw to first for the outs, and the inning is over. Tigers get one run on a couple of hits and leave a man. It had a playoff feel to it over the weekend against the Royals. Cool weather and three really good games against KC. The Tigers off to a an early lead here tonight. One nothing as we go to the second. Tigers a run on two hits and Seattle no runs on one hit. It'll be Raul Ibanez, the veteran, to start things off for Seattle. Talked to quite a few players today and they all echoed the same sentiments that you just echoed that that was a really good series and that. Kansas City Royals squad is going to be a team to be reckoned with the next number of years with their skill set. Alex Avila, a couple of big home runs yesterday to give the Tigers a win. They took the final game in that series, shaved the magic number to nine. Ibanez is still going at age 41 and doing it still quite well. And at age 41, he still has a very quick bat. And he really hasn't lost anything as far as being able to catch up. To guys that throw hard, guys that have mid 90s fastballs. He's had a really nice career. 27 home runs this year for Ibanez. He's knocked in 62. And Porcello missed inside. Two balls and one strike. Probably playing a little bit more this year than he thought he was going to when they signed him as a free agent in the offseason. He thought maybe he would a DH a couple times a week, but did not expect to get consistent reps like he really did the first half of the year. 
And he'll shoot that one to left field out of the reach of Cabrera, who has swung around towards short. It'll be a leadoff single for Raul Ibanez. And Raul Ibanez did exactly what you're supposed to do to a two seam fastball that is fading down and away from you. He's a professional hitter. That ball about three inches off the dish. They're playing him to pull. He took what they were giving him. Nice job by Tuiasa Sopo keeping him to a single. So the leadoff man is on the second hit of the ball game for Seattle. It'll bring up Justin Smoke. 244 batting average this year for Smoke. He's hit 16 homers. Smoke likes Tigers pitching. He's hit quite a few home runs in his big league career against Tigers pitching, uh, which started with the Texas Rangers. Smoke has hit five home runs in this ballpark alone, which is not a uh, home run hitting conducive ballpark, but he's been able to go deep quite a bit here. He's got some sock in that bat. Switch hitter. Fouled back to the screen. No balls, two strikes. But not performing nearly to the level that they thought they were going to get when they did make a deal for him a few years back and they got him from the Texas Rangers. He was a principal in that deal and they thought he was going to be an all star at first base. 0 oh 2 on the switch hitting Justin Smoke, who is much better from the left side than he is from the right side. The 0 2 is outside, one ball, two strikes. All 16 of his home runs have been hit left handed. Average much higher. Porcello pitched around a leadoff single back in the first, trying to do the same here in the second. Here's the 1 2. Missed it outside. Two balls and two strikes. Only 179 from the right side of the plate. 276 lefty for Smoke. And he pops that one up. Left side of the infield, Cabrera. Toward the foul line and one gone. Smoke now is over his last 17. By the way, you can vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game presented by the new quarter pounder BLT using your cell phone text Tigers followed by a space, then the player's uniform number to 37338. Or if you'd like, vote online at FoxSportsDetroit.com. Yeah, the Mariners just finished up a three-game set against the St. Louis Cardinals in St. Louis, and then they come here to uh, the Motor City to take on the Detroit Tigers and I really can't think of two other venues uh, that are as special to go if you're an opposing player than those two right now. The ball inside to Mike Zunino. Two outstanding baseball cities. This is a season long 10 game trip for Seattle so it comes right at the end of the season their longest trip of the year. The 1 0. Swing and a miss. One ball, one strike on the former number one pick, Mike Zanino. And to take that a step further, they had to look at that St. Louis Cardinals pitching staff, which is really good in its own right to come here to face one of the best staffs in the American League. The Tigers will run at you. Here's the 1 1. Chopped foul. 1 and 2 on Zanino. Well, Seattle will miss Max Scherzer, who pitched yesterday, but uh, doesn't seem to matter. They're going to get a quality pitcher every single night in this series, beginning with Porcello tonight, Sanchez, Verlander, and then Fister. And it's a lethal combination when you look at some of the numbers that their offense has posted this year. They've been one of the poorest offensive clubs in the majors. Ball low, 2 2 on Mike Zanino. Nick Franklin waiting on deck. Swing and a miss, and Zanino is out of there. Porcello has his second strikeout tonight.
Rick's got a lot of late life on his two-seam fastball today. Same life that he had on that two-seamer uh, five days ago against the White Sox when he was able to get 13 ground outs. 92 with that last two-seamer. He'll get up to 95 with his four-seam fastball. And, of course, the curveball's been a really good pitch for Rick all season long. Here's Nick Franklin. The breaking ball stays high. 1-0 on the second baseman for the M's. There are certainly a lot of differences between these two teams, but when you look at seven, eight, nine hitters, Tigers have the best average at the bottom of the lineup in the American League. The Mariners are dead last, only 224 from their bottom three. That's pulled to second base, and Fonte has it there. And the inning is over, so nothing comes. A leadoff single on our way to the bottom of the second at Comerica Park. Is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Jeep rediscover the freedom of the open road at the Jeep Celebration event. And by Stouffer's Family Meals, dinner made the way you'd make it. Tigers on top of this one, one nothing as we go now to the bottom of the second. And the Tigers send Omar Infante to the plate facing lefty Joe Saunders. Omar takes ball one to start things off. Infante, Tui Asasopo, and then Alex Avila. Saunders gave up two singles and a wild pitch also factored in the scoring. There's a line drive to right center, base hit. Over there to cut it off is Ackley, going to try for two. The throw, not in time. Diving head first with a double is Infante. Omar Infante is not 100% as far as that ankle is concerned, but yet he goes out there and he produces at a very high level. He was thinking too right out of the batter's box. It was going to be very difficult for the center fielder, Dustin Ackley, to get over to this ball and then redirect his body, get anything on the throw to prevent Omar Infante from sliding in safely at second base. Nice play by Ackley. He made it close, but great hustle. By Infante. Only Omar's second hit on this homestand. We'll see if the Tigers now can get him in. Here is Tui Asasopo. Matt getting a start here tonight against the lefty Saunders. That was Omar's first hit of the season against Seattle Mariners pitching. He was over 12 when the Tigers made that trip out west. Tui batting 270. He's hit seven home runs. He had not made a start since September the 3rd, so it had been a while. And Jim saying before the game today that he'd been working quite a bit recently with Lloyd McClendon, the Tigers hitting instructor, and uh, they're trying to iron some things out. And Jim also made a point of saying, you know what, we don't want to forget about this guy because he was so big for us in the first half. So I want him to start tonight. He'll give him an opportunity here against Saunders. So 
Now he's ahead, two balls and no strikes. And he'll take three and oh the count. Waiting on deck is Alex Avila. Three oh from Saunders. He'll take it to strike right at the knees. Matt played for Seattle from 2008 to 2010. And in his time with Seattle, he played in 71 total games at the major league level. Tonight, game 72 in just one season with the Tigers. Well, he's gotten a longer look. And it's grounded foul, three and two. Didn't know whether Infante was going to start this game or not. He was taking ground balls at second base, and a ball was hit off the bat. And he was hit on the ankle, it appeared, the right ankle. And they took a look at Omar. He walked off the field, did not finish batting practice but apparently good to start this contest and good enough to double to start things off here in the second here's the three two bouncing ball back up the middle and a nice play there by Trienfeld who will spin and throw him out Trienfeld has already made a couple of really nice plays in this game Jackson hit one right up the box to begin the game it was off the glove of the pitcher and Trienfeld able to redirect the body and make a nice throw to get Jackson this time he does a pair of wet and fires a strike to Justin Smoke the first baseman. Tuiasa Sopo gets the runner up to third with one out. Now we'll see if Avila can score him, and it looks like Seattle early on in this game will draw the infield in. Avila looking for his first hit against Seattle pitching this year. Two homers in yesterday's game gives him 11 for the season. And he looks at a strike on the outer edge 0 and 1. Talked about Avila at the top of the show today. His hands are working very well for him right now. Earlier in the season his swing was much longer. He wasn't catching up to fastballs. He was swinging at breaking balls down in the dirt. And, but the hands have worked very efficiently for him the second half of the year. And that's why the numbers are way up. 0 oh and 2. So Alex finds himself behind in the count. Over his last nine games, he's hitting at a 407 clip. Good block by Zanino behind the plate, and the count goes 1 and 2. Zonino has already been awfully busy this evening blocking several breaking balls down in the dirt out of the hand of Joe Saunders. Infante leadoff double standing at third now with one out Avila trying to plate him here. Alex has knocked in 45 this season. Swing and a miss. Down he goes as Saunders gets a big strikeout. That's the first of the game for the Seattle lefty. Saunders has a couple different breaking balls. One he'll throw at about 83 miles an hour. This one he really slowed down to the speed of 79, and that got Avila out on that front foot, and he swung right over the top of it. So a chance now for Iglesias. We'll say batting 315. Infield back now with two outs. Iglesias uh, had the day off yesterday for the most part. He did enter in the top half of the ninth inning to go to shortstop. And Jim Leland took Santiago out of the game. One ball, one strike. Shin splints probably something you'll have to deal with the rest of the season, but he's had an ability to run and uh, run the bases with no trouble despite those shin splints. But every now and then he just needs a day or two to uh, kind of recharge a bit with those legs. There's a ball inside, two balls, one strike. I was uh, talking to him before the game today, and I was asking him how did his body feel, and he said it feels good. And I said 100%. He says, well, no, no one's 100% right now, but uh, my shin splints are pretty good. You ever had shin splint 
<laughs> injury that, at all? Not that I know of. I don't either. I don't remember having anything like that. But I've talked to those that have had that injury. Painful. And it is not good. Painful. I mean, thing. not good. Three and one. Jackson waiting on deck. Bouncing ball left side. Nice hop for Seeker. That'll end the inning and the threat. No runs. A double is stranded. Tigers baseball tonight presented by Bell Tire. Verlander or Nick Lidstrom life size bobblehead during our tin can auction. You could purchase two for five dollar raffle tickets anytime prior to the end of the third inning at Gate D tomorrow inside Comerica Park. All proceeds benefit the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan, Detroit Tigers Foundation, Detroit Red Wings Foundation, and affiliates of Village Charities. Now the Tigers have themselves a one nothing lead as we go to the top of inning number three now Porcello back to work and a bouncing ball to second. It'll be handled there by Infante and Carlos Trienfeld is out on one pitch. Good start for Rick here in the third. Now the top of the order Dustin Ackley. Single for Ackley to start the game. Got as far as second base, and that was it. That's it for a strike 0 and 1. With that beard, Ackley uh, looks like he should be playing for the Boston Red Sox or the uh, Oakland Athletics. One of those two squads. Been a beard e epidemic around the uh, American League this year. The 0 1. One ball, one strike on Ackley. Ackley set down to the minor leagues for a spell this year to try and get his uh, his batting average turned around. It's at 327 in the second half. So apparently that stint in the minors at Tacoma, their Triple A team, worked. Former number one pick out of North Carolina. Two, one pitch is line foul two and two on Dustin Ackley. He talked about Ackley's numbers uh, this year as far as positions he's played. He's played four different positions for the Mariners this year in the big leagues. And if he doesn't get that batting average up and start to produce a little bit more, he might find himself uh, a role player, not a starter. Chopper hits a second straight at Infante, who's going to handle a couple of opportunities here. And there are two gone in the third, which sends us to a game break now. We check in with Mickey York.
Hard thing. Thanks for the Rangers are dropping like a rock. They are tied with Tampa and this is exactly what Bud Selig had envisioned late in the season about a week and a half to go in the second wild card spot up for grabs as well. They played so well uh, when they lost Nelson Cruz to suspension but they really miss him right now from an offensive standpoint. Here's the 1 0. Mickey York has made it all the way back to Southfield. He was at the ballpark today for Tigers Live. He must have had a police escort. No, he's got his own private jet. You know, he know. rolls like you roll. It's either a helicopter or a jet. They've got a landing pad out there in Southfield. The 2 0 pitch is in there for a strike, 2 and 1. A lively fastball tonight by Porcello. All of them at 92, 93, with a lot of tilt on them. A lot of fading action away from the left handers. Popped up foul. And Vila will give chase but runs out of real estate. Two and two on Abraham Almonte. The Seattle team coming into play here tonight. Well they are dead last in team average. And only Minnesota and Chicago have scored fewer runs than Seattle this year. They thought they were going to be much better. That's why they brought Ibanez back. That's why they made a trade for Kendrys Morales. That's why they signed Michael Morse as a free agent. But they just have not performed very well from an offensive standpoint. Their pitching was pretty good last year. It's not been so good this year. Drill to right field and hit well. That ball is up and that ball is gone. A home run. Well, that's what Seattle does do well. They will hit the ball out of the ballpark. They've done it again as Almonte hits his second. Talked about Almonte when he came to the dish his first time up. They really like his skill set. He can do multiple things. He can really run, and apparently he's got some bat speed too. Uh, that was a breaking ball that Porcello didn't quite get to the area where he wanted it to get it to, and Almonte jumped all over it. Second career homer for Almonte, the 171st of the year for Seattle as a team, which is third best in the American League. Here's Kyle Seeger. Ball outside, 1 0 on Seeger, who fly to left field back in the first. Seeger making his 103rd consecutive start at third base for Seattle in this game. Good power, good average, runs a little bit. The 1 1 pitch. Two balls, one strike on their number three hitter. Ems have tied it up on the two out solo shot by Abraham Almonte. Now Porcello's 2 1. Drill down the right field line, but hooking foul. It's 45 now for Porcello. And yeah, throwing strikes never been an issue for Porcello. And two or fewer walks in all of his starts this year for the most part. Strike machine. Tigers and Seattle met way back in April and Detroit taking two out of three at Safeco Field. Back him out of there. He's done that quite often here tonight against the left handers and really that's the next step for Porcello is to improve on his career numbers against left handed batters. And since he's come to the big leagues left handers are 308 against Porcello. And he lost him. And that could be problemsome, uh, problematic, I should say, because you always have opposing managers stacking their lineup with left handed uh, batters against Rick. Lefty's 308, righty's 262. 
Here comes Kendry's Morales. The DH. Line to the shortstop his first time up. Looked like he was going to drive in a run, but a leaping play by Iglesias took a hit and an RBI away. And he takes a strike 0 1. Wasn't too long ago that Morales hit 34 home runs with the Angels. That was back in 2009. Then he suffered that broken leg. That celebrating a couple of years, didn't it? And he missed an entire year with that broken leg. That's fouled straight back. And even when you come back, or when he came back, it was slow to go. But pretty good year this year 22 homers, 77 RBIs. Seeger, the runner at first base with two outs. He's just walked. Ooh, he tried to hold up when he went around for strike three. And Avila will throw it down to first base. Inning is over. They tie the game with a home run by Almonte. Tigers coming up at the bottom of the third. It's a 1 1 game. Brought to you by Arby's. Try Arby's snack and save menu today. Arby's slicing up freshness. And by Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Back here at Comerica Park. Another good crowd watching Tigers baseball here tonight. It's a 1 1 ball game as we go to the bottom of inning number three in the top of the Tigers lineup coming up. It'll be Jackson, then Hunter, and then Cabrera. Joe Saunders back to the hill. And Saunders in this game has given up one run on three hits. Sidesteps some trouble back in the second when he gave up a leadoff double. Tigers failed to score in Fonte though. Two and all the count on Jackson. AJ is so for one. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Drilled into left center field. Base hit. Ackley cuts it off, holding Jackson to a leadoff single. By the way, if the Tigers combine for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. Tigers have yet to go deep tonight. We'll see what Torrey can do here now. He's singled and scored the Tigers' run back in the first inning. Joe Saunders has already bounced quite a few breaking balls. So if you're Jackson on first base, you need to be aware of that fact. And if he bounces another one, you need to get yourself a good secondary lead and make sure you give yourself every opportunity to get down in the scoring position. Zunino, their catcher, has been awfully busy this evening.
Here's the 0-1. Torrey sends a ground ball to second. This could be two. Franklin, Trienfell, and on to first base for a double play. 4-6-3. Nice feed by Franklin to Trienfell, and Trienfell makes sure Jackson gets down. He drops down to that sidearm angle to make sure Austin Jackson makes a slide prematurely and doesn't get close to taking him out. Now Cabrera with two outs. Sends a high fly ball into shallow left center field. Ackley coming in. It's going to be a quick inning for Joe Saunders. Let's go to the fourth. Charter Internet when these two teams hooked up out west on April 17th there were 40 combined strikeouts in that game 21 by Tigers pitchers 19 by Seattle which is the most in a major league game this year of course that game did go 14 innings Porcello started for the Tigers and it was King Felix for the Seattle Mariners one of those nights where you need the heaters in the dugout it's a little bit cool here at the ballpark this evening Max started that game not Rick Porcello. Porcello to the hill facing Ibanez who looks at a strike. Ibanez smoke and then Zunino. These are the five, six, and seven hitters for Seattle. Home run by Almonte in the third tied it up. The 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. There are eight active players right now who have homered both at Tiger Stadium, the old Tiger Stadium, and Comerica Park, and Ibanez is one of the eight. Of course, Comerica Park opened up in the year 2000. Ibanez hit one back in 98 at Tiger Stadium. Down he goes this time, though, and that is a strikeout for Rick. Good curveball here by Porcello, and a good two seam fastball to speed the bat up, and then. The really nice bender with some outstanding depth on it at 77 uh, miles an hour. Here is smoke. Popped up his first time. In for a strike. Justin Smoke was a high school teammate of the starting catcher. Matt Weeders in South Carolina. Imagine that. Here's the 0 1. He waves and misses 0 and 2 the count. Two guys with that kind of skill set on the same high school team. Goose Creek, South Carolina. 
Weeders has gone on to make all star teams and then we told you earlier that Smoke's still trying to find his way in the big leagues. Smoke was the uh, key piece coming over in the Cliff Lee deal and I think at this point Seattle figured that the numbers would be a little better than they have been. He hit only 217 all of last year when they got him from Texas. He was playing some outstanding baseball. That's why Seattle thought that he was going to be a cornerstone at first base for the next decade. He's got some soft hands. Defensively, catching the baseball has never been an issue for him, but the offensive numbers just aren't there yet. Porcello is ahead, one and two. They play smoke to pull on the infield. And a little bit outside. Two balls, two strikes on Justin Smoke. Waiting on deck, Mike Zanino. Here's the 2 2. Way high, 3 and 2. Fouled off. Three and two, the count remains on Smoke. Tigers got a run in the first inning. They went ahead on a wild pitch with the runner at third. And then El Monte hit his home run in the third to tie it up. Drill to right center field. That'll get down. Base hit. Jackson cuts it off, and Smoke has a one out single. Hey fans, the pennant race is on, and you can place a deposit on 2014 Detroit Tigers season tickets. And if you do so, receive a 2013 postseason priority. Call 313 471 ball or visit tigers.com. Postseason baseball not too far away, and hopefully the Tigers will be involved again this year. Tigers fans getting spoiled in postseason every year. Here's Mike Zanino, and he looks at a strike 0 and 1. It'll be long before those towels will be waving here at the ballpark, hopefully. Folks that have scarves and hats on, too. It's already some folks bundled up down here tonight. Including the manager. Collar up. He's gone from a sweatshirt to a full jacket now. Here's a wave and a miss, 0 and 2. Zanino struck out his first time up. First round pick. Last year, as a matter of fact, out of Florida. So he hadn't been in the minor leagues all that long. A, a much decorated catcher at Florida. Games really changed. And guys getting into the big leagues you know, so rapidly these days, especially position players. Pitchers, you can kind of understand, but position players, catchers, that's awfully quick. Five strikeouts now for Porcello. Another one of those lively fastballs he's featuring today. Here's Nick Franklin. He bounced out his first time up. Skies this one in the air to left center field. Tuiasa Silpo to the gap to make the catch. And that is that for Seattle.
weekend when the Kansas City Royals were here. The last 16 contests for Prince Fielder. Boy, his bat has been on fire. And to the tune of a 424 batting average, tons of extra base hits. The OPS is off the charts, and he's just getting it done. And it's welcome that he's doing it at the end of the season, leading into the postseason. So it's good to be clicking on all cylinders. Fielder Martinez Infante here in the fourth inning facing Joe Saunders. Tied at one here tonight. One run, four hits for both squads in this one. The first of four in this series between these two teams. First pitch outside to left handed batting Prince Fielder. Prince in the top 10 at RBIs. He's fifth in the top 10 in walks as well this year. The 1 0 pitch. Two balls, no strikes. And dangerous count here for Joe Saunders if he decides to throw Prince Fielder a fastball. Carl Willis, the pitching coach, longtime buddy of Eric Wedge. As a matter of fact, he was Wedge's pitching coach in Cleveland. Pulled on the ground a second, straight at Franklin. And Fielder is out, one gone. We'll bring up Victor. Eric Wes, their manager, had quite a scare. And this season he had a stroke and missed quite a bit of time before he was able to resume his duties as big league manager. He's too young to have a stroke. Life, man. <laughs> Life.com, buddy. You never know. You gotta take care of yourself. Here is Victor Martinez now with one out. And he looks at a strike 0 and 1. For Victor, he bounced out. He's 0 for 1 in this game. And Martinez now has been on a pretty good stretch in his last 20 games. He has hit safely in 18 of them. Solidifying that five spot in the Tigers lineup, which for the first couple of months, the Tigers had to rely on Cabrera and Fielder. And then Victor got hot. One ball, two strikes. Saunders, a former first round pick of the Angels back in 2002 out of Virginia Tech. Parts of six years with the Halos. Here's the one two ground ball to third gobbled up there by Seeger. And Martinez is out a couple of ground ball outs two away. Total of 50 now for Saunders at 20 pitch first inning took a while the Tigers got their run in that first. He had only a six pitch third. Here's Infante, a bit of a different look tonight, wearing the socks high. 316 batting average, double to lead off the second, but did not score, and he looks at a ball inside. Infante now is 7 for 15 in his career against the lefty Saunders. 2 0 the count. Tigers by and large don't have too many guys with a uh, deep track record against Saunders but some at bats for Omar and he's made good use of them. Backs away from a strike run up to two and one. It could be possibly that uh, Omar Infante has changed his look with the pants ar around the knees. He was really slowed down in that series against Kansas City didn't do much offensively so uh, pitchers and players will switch it up. The double that he hit back in the second, which perhaps is a byproduct of the high socks, snapped a three for 20 skid. Two Yasu Sopo waiting on deck. Here's the 2 2. Swing and a miss. Socks didn't work that time. 1 2 3 inning for Joe Saunders, four in the books here at Comerica, and we are still tied at one.
well documented the fact that the last couple of starts, Rick Porcello's had a lot of life on that two-seam fastball. It's 92 miles an hour, but it's the movement that doesn't allow the hitters to get good swings at it. And we also told you that he scrapped the slider in the offseason, uh, which has allowed him to kind of perfect uh, this curveball. Rick, a career-high strikeouts this season. Every one that he gets adds on to his career high. He's been a really nice number five starter since coming to the big leagues. Out distribution for Porcello. Five punch outs in this game. And three of them on the ground. Four via the air in Porcello. Facing Treenfeld to start the inning. Then Ackley and Almonte. Treenfeld bounced down to his first time up batting 107. He'll take a strike going one on Treenfeld, who's now three for 28 in the big leagues this year. Down to Triple A was batting 282 with five home runs. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss. No balls, two strikes. This swing seemed a little bit long. Our view from high above the scoreboard at Comerica Park. There's another swing and a miss. That didn't take long. One gone. Six strikeouts now for Rick. If you're a Seattle Mariners hitter and the pitcher has this kind of life on his fastball, as a right handed hitter, you simply have to pull your hands close to your body and try to hit that ball the opposite way. A lot of their hitters are trying to get out in front of it, therefore, they're swinging right over the top of it. Porcello strikeout high this year is 11. He did that against the Pirates. There's a strike called on Dustin Ackley. Ackley coming off a 390 month of August. The 01. Ackley has already gotten a steady diet of uh, curveballs from Porcello. Uh, this is his third at bat of the evening. He did single successfully in the right field on a breaking ball his first time up. That one stayed up fastball and it's a check swing foul one two. That's what happens when you're looking for a breaking ball and then the pitcher throws you a 90 mile power fastball and you still think you can get to it. That's exactly what happened there. Ackley looking soft still thought he could hit the fastball. Got it with a breaking ball on the outer edge. Ackley punched out of there and seven Porcello strikeouts. Real nice uh, pitch sequence to Ackley uh, by Porcello and great leadership skills uh, by Alex Avila, knowing exactly what Ackley was looking for. They caught him in between and he got the strikeout looking. Abraham Almonte, who tied this game with a home run back in the third, he'll stand in. Strike called on Almonte. Cabrera on the grass at third after that show of bunt. Fouled at home plate. They could own two. Lamonte is listed at 5'9, 205, a rather stocky build for the young man from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Here's the 1 1 offering. Slow roller hit to the right side. Fielder will come over to make the play. He tried to shovel it to Rick, but he couldn't handle it. Infield single. Second hit of the game for Almonte. A little indecisiveness on the part of Porcello whether he was going to break right away to the bag or whether Prince Fielder was going to do it. He did get there, but he was not able to handle the ball cleanly, and that might go as an air, not a base hit. It's a base hit. Is it? Infield single. Which is 
it's going to be the fifth hit of the game now for Seattle. And that's going to bring up Kyle Seeger, who walked but did not score back in the third. 271 for Seeger. Strike one called on Seeger. Rick Porcello 16 of 21 in first pitch strikes and which is the reason why he's racked up seven strikeouts. He's been ahead of just about every last one of these Seattle Mariners hitters and he's done a marvelous job of expanding the strike zone after he's gotten ahead of them. Do you think that was a generous base hit though? No I thought it was a base hit. I thought it was kind of a tough play. A tweener. What was your thinking on that? I score? thought that was probably an air. I mean it's my personal opinion. I thought big league would make that play. Seager was a third round pick by Seattle a couple of years ago in 09. His brother was a first round pick last year by the Dodgers. There's a ball outside, one ball, one strike. One run, five hits tonight for Seattle. One run, four hits for Detroit. Neither team with an error to this point. On the outer edge, and now Seeger behind in the count, one and two. Not real crazy about that last call from Chris Cuccioni. When you're filling up the strike zone as consistently as Porcello has done this evening, you're going to get the benefit of the doubt, where they'd be. A couple of inches off the inside corner or a couple of inches off the outside corner. Tigers tonight in search of their 87th win of the season. They came in at 86 and 63. Here's the one two. Lavila down to block it. Two balls and two strikes. Tigers have been a really good home team this year. In fact, last couple of years they have. And they're 46 and 28 at home this season. Only Oakland and Boston have more home wins. Ironically enough, Tigers chasing both those two squads for the best record in the American League. That they are, and that certainly comes with some perks once the postseason rolls around. Namely, home field advantage. American League will have home field advantage in the World Series as well. And thanks to their victory in New York, led by Jim Leland. Fill it now three and two on Seeger with Kendry's Morales on deck. It's a total of 80 now for Rick. Most of the innings in the teens with the exception of the third a 20 pitch third that was the inning in which El Monte homered. Tying the ball game up at one. Runner going on 3 2 and it's popped up. Third base side foul ground. Miggy makes the play to retire to the side. No runs going to hit. One man left in Tigers baseball tonight, presented by Bell Tire.
last player age 41 or older to hit at least 27 home runs in a season. That is what uh, Mr. Ibanez has done this year at the age of 41. We'd like to know the last guy to do it. That is your mission tonight. Come up with the answer to that AT&T trivia question. Matt Tui Asisopo leads it off as we go to the bottom of the fifth and he skips out of the way from a Saunders pitch inside. You know the answer to that trivia question? I did not. I do know the answer only because I saw the answer. But I did not I did not get it initially. Even though I should have, thinking back on it. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Outside, two balls, no strikes. Saunders had a 1 2 3 4. Facing the bottom of the Tigers lineup in this inning. Grounded foul. Two and one the count. This is only the second start since September the 1st for Tuyas Sopo. The 2 1 pitch. There's a strike in the outer edge, 2 2. Off the end of the bat, scooped up by Smoke. Wide throw. Tuiasa Sopo is safe at first base. Trying to hit the pitcher covering, but his throw sent Saunders sprawling to the ground. He's getting up slowly. Smoke, pretty good defender uh, over at first base, and he had plenty of time to make a better throw to you know, Joe Saunders, who got over to the bag in a timely manner, but. He threw the ball behind him and Saunders couldn't make the adjustment. Wasn't able to lead the receiver there. And that's going to be an E3. It's a good thing he's not on your fantasy football team. You know, it doesn't matter these days, he's on my team. You won, didn't you, last week? First week. This week I got pounded in submission. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Well, thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> I, mean, I thought it was all good. <laughs> it was last week. Here's Avila. He struck out his first time up. Saunders was slow to getting up. Catching his breath as he gets back to the hill. Avila, two out of nine now in the homestand. Swing and a miss. There was a time when Saunders was one of the better lefties in the American League. He had a 16 win season and a 17 win season with the Angels. Kind of lost in the shadow of all the other really good left handers in the American League. John Lester, Price, Sabathia, just to name a few. 89 career wins. Bouncing ball back up the middle. Tree and fell. Backhanded flip one. Relayed it first. It'll get by smoke. Ooh, that would have been real nice had they been able to complete that. It would have been a one, six, four, three double play in Triganfell. He has shown some range at the shortstop position. He hadn't done much with the bat so far this year, but he got that ball to Franklin. Franklin bounced it over to Smoke, and Smoke couldn't help out the second baseman. One on, one out. It's going to break up Iglesias. He grounded to the third baseman his first time up. And he looks at a ball high just above the belt. Yeah, Saunders inviting a hit and run here, possibly. And Jim really trusts the bat handling skills of Iglesias. He's squeezed a couple of times this year. And since Iglesias has put on the Tigers uniform, uh, he's put the hit and run on quite a bit. It's a great count to do it in if he chooses to do so. Iglesias took a really long look down at Tom Brookins. Almost too long. That's why he threw over first base. 
opposing managers and coaches saw exactly what you just saw. That's why you have to be precise when you're giving signs and if you're the hitter you can't look down there twice. Here's the 1 0. Bouncing ball to second. Franklin tags the runner one, and he'll throw to first for the double play. It was the hit and run, but it didn't work. We'll go to the six. Dedicated first base. We'll take a look at the second baseman here, Franklin, and how he takes it and he holds on to that ball with both hands to apply the tag of Avila. And when you're in the baseline like that, the base runner can simply run you over if he chooses to do so. But Franklin wasn't going to have any of that. That's why he kept the hand, the ball, and the glove, and then he was able to complete the double play. I don't think I've seen anybody really go out of their way to take out of a second baseman in the baseline since we watched. Albert Bell do it to Fernando Vena about a decade ago. He flipped him upside down. That was a severe mismatch. It was ugly. Well, Porcello going back to the hill now in a 1 1 ball game. And we are headed to the sixth inning. Kenry's Morales leads it off. It might have been over a decade. I'm not sure, but it was a long time ago. Morales, Ibanez, and Smoke in the sixth for Seattle. We've been tied since the home run in the third by El Monte. Breaking ball drops a little bit low. One ball, no strikes to Kenry's Morales. Here's the 1 0. Porcello tonight, seven strikeouts. He's gotten that many a couple of times this year. We mentioned his season high is 11 against the Pirates. It was back on May 23rd. On the outer edge, one and two. Rick with a quality start in nine of his last 13 for Jim Leland. Here's the one, two. Two balls, two strikes on Morales. Seattle gave up Jason Vargas, the pitcher, to get Kendry's Morales, adding some offense to the middle of their lineup. Now Porcello with the 2 2. Grounded foul down the first baseline. Rick Porcello got his 60th victory just five days ago, and there's only three other active players. That have gotten their 60th victories in their career prior to their 25th 25th birthday. 
Felix Hernandez, CeCe Sabathia, and Clayton Kershaw. And now Rick Porcello is in that elite company. Here's the 2 2. And it's off the plate, 3 and 2. All three of those guys have won Cy Youngs. The victory here tonight for Rick would be his 13th of the season. His career high is 14. He'll have an opportunity to get there. Swing and a miss. And Morales is out of there. That'll be eight strikeouts now for Rick. One out. Here's that AT&T trivia question. And we asked you a little bit earlier. Who was the last player age 41 or older to hit at least 27 home runs in a season? Couldn't get it. Very violent. Yeah, should have got it. It was so easy. Jeez. We couldn't get it. 2007. I couldn't think whether he shut it down before 41 or not. One gone now. Here is Ibanez. We were talking earlier about Ibanez being one of eight actives who have homered both at Tiger Stadium and Comerica Park. Derek Jeter and A Rod on that list. Miguel Tejada, Eric Chavez. Guys that have been around a while. Tory Hunter, our own Tory Hunter now. They rave about the leadership skills of Ibanez. They said in the clubhouse he is an absolute leader, and of course, we talk about that on the regular uh, regarding Tory Hunter. Check swing. It's amazing to me that a guy like Ibanez, who obviously had some big hits last year for the Yankees, but I mean, the guy's 41 years old. You would think, if anything, he's going to be DHing, but he still goes out there and plays the outfield. As he is tonight, he's out in left field. Big swing there. And he got a Vila on the backswing. Rick Porcello has done an outstanding job today against their left handed batters with his curveball. We told you his career numbers coming in against left right handed batters over 300 today. Uh, he's been able to neutralize them for the most part. Ooh, the hook just stayed a little bit outside. It was close three and two. Justin smoke on deck. Ground ball foul first base side. Here's a couple of invaluable veterans. Of course, Torrey Hunter, his presence in the Tigers clubhouse and on the field has been unbelievable. And Raul Ibanez has done marvelous work tutoring uh, some of the younger kids in their clubhouse. There are some of their career numbers, totals in what they've been able to accomplish. And he lost him. So one out walk to Ibanez. Time for a game break now. We check in with Mickey York. All right, Mick, thanks. Here it is 1 1. The Tigers trying to get to that magic number. It's down to nine, but Cleveland is not really helping out all that much. That'd be Chris Sale over the weekend. There's a ground ball right side. Infante spinning. Fires to second and threw it away. Couldn't hit the glove of Iglesias. Everybody is safe. Maybe one of those plays where Infante was better served to get the out at first. Now there are two on with one out. The bottom line is they need to get one out. Uh, they didn't get that out a good throw to Iglesias and they do get the out but Omar did not throw the ball where Iglesias could catch it therefore Iglesias had to reach over across the bag and couldn't keep the right foot on the bag as he was doing so. So Seattle with an opportunity now Mike Zanino steps in. Swing and a miss. And the one thing Porcello has going for him now is facing the bottom of the Seattle lineup. And we mentioned that their seven, eight, nine guys have a combined average of a little over 200. He's already punched him out a couple of times tonight, but he'll take that ground ball right now. He doesn't want to get the strikeout. He'll take the two for one. No balls, two strikes. 
charge Infante with an error on that last play. Each ball club now with one miscue. Zanino again in the hole in the count 0 and 2. Got a piece of that one to stay alive. Ibanez and smoke the base runners. We're in the sixth inning, tied at one. Porcello in search of that ground ball. And it's grounded foul. 0 and 2, the count stays. That'll be an even 100 now for Rick. Porcello in his complete game against Chicago. This is how dominant he was. He threw just 105 pitches. 100 pitches have really snuck up quickly on Porcello this evening. I was thinking the same thing. I was kind of surprised we're only in the sixth. It did not look like he was pitching in that time of stress, but he has racked up eight strikeouts, which is what he doesn't normally do. Make that nine now. Just too shy of his season high, which is also his career high. Most of the strikeouts today for Porcello have come on the curveball. That time it's a two seamer at the bottom of the zone. He wanted the ground ball, but he'll take the strikeout. Third strikeout of the Evening turned in by their catcher, Zunino. Action of the Tigers. Ben Alvarez, the lefty, and Albuquerque, the righty. Franklin 0 for 2, ground ball and a fly ball. And he looks at a breaking ball low, 1 0. Fourteen strikeouts in his last fourteen and two thirds innings. Just three base on balls. One and one. Good change up. Franklin to fly out to ground out. He is also a former first round pick. That was back in 2009. Swing and a miss. One and two the count. Porcello now one strike away from his 10th strikeout of this game. And the most pitches he's thrown in any start this year is 106. He's at 104 right now. And more than likely, it's going to be it for him. Jim won't allow him to go much further than that. Hopefully, the Tigers, if he gets out of this, can score him a run and put him in a position to win uh, his 13th game of the year. And the 1 2. Got him, strike three. Franklin caught looking 10 count them 10 strikeouts for Rick Porcello.
Opening Tory Hunter single, then he was able to scamper all the way to third on the Miguel Cabrera single. Then he came home on the wild pitch. The Seattle Mariners, they got their run. It came on one big, mighty swing of the bat off of Abraham Almonte's Porcello threw a breaking ball down in his nitro zone. And he hit it out for a solo shot to right field. Ten strikeouts by Porcello. Outstanding movement on the two seamer. The curveballs had great tilt on it as well. Has leaded very few changeups. Our infinity high speed pitch of the evening for Porcello. He topped out at 94 miles an hour. Second time this year, Rick has gone double digits in strikeouts. Here is Jackson now trying to get the offense going. AJ fouls it back out of play down in the count on two. Jackson's had two good at bats his first time up. He hit one right back to the middle that uh, Joe Saunders was able to get a piece of, and it trickled to the shortstop. Uh, for the put out. Saunders meanwhile had thrown just 64 pitches to get through five innings. Here's the 0 2. And he's a guy that is uh, or at least coming into this game had an ERA of over seven in the second half. And a three and six record. But the Tigers have managed only four hits against him tonight. Comes the fastball in and it missed the corner. Two and two on Jackson. Austin with a single and a ground out. Hunter next and then Miguel Cabrera. Swing and a miss. Jackson is out on strikes. First out of the sixth inning. He's three strikeouts now for Saunders. Good fastball yeah, that he wanted inside, but it kind of leaped right back over the plate, but Jackson still unable to catch up to it. Torrey has a single and bounced into a double play his last time up. Takes way outside 1-0. Since the ground ball short, Trian fell to his left. And Hunter is out. Six to three. Fans don't forget coming up tomorrow against Seattle. First 10,000 fans receive a Miguel Cabrera bobblehead. For tickets, call 866 66 Tiger or visit tigers.com and score yourself one of these really nifty Miguel Cabrera bobbleheads. Two up, two down here in the sixth inning. And now here is Cabrera. Only four Tigers hits. Cabrera has one of them. He's singled. Goes back in the first to set up the first Tigers run. If you're Saunders here, you can't allow Miguel Cabrera to beat you. Not in a 1 1 game, bottom half of the sixth inning, and not with the success you had against left handers this year. You have to pitch to Miguel very carefully. August 26th, the last home run for Cabrera. That was against Oakland. Way outside. And he's doing just that, 3 0. Saunders has not allowed a hit since Jackson's single way back in the third. And Cabrera takes a strike, 3 and 1. Seventy five now for Saunders. Outside he lost him so that'll be a two out walk. And it'll bring up Prince Fielder. As I mentioned lefties batting just 220 against Saunders. Pitching awfully carefully to Cabrera. Fielder fly to center field and then it bounced out. He's 0 for 2. He's 65 this year following a Miguel Cabrera walk.
Soft line drive left. Base hit. That'll get Cabrera to second base as Prince once again goes the other way. Something ruined now with two outs. And just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game. It is brought to you by Miller Lights. Joe Saunders pitched around Miguel Cabrera to get to Prince Fielder. Now he finds himself in a situation and where he's got to go after one of the hottest hitters in the big leagues the last two months. And that would be Victor Martinez with a runner in scoring position. And Victor batting 297. He has put the ball on the ground twice in this game. Once to short, once to third. If he's going to drive Miguel Cabrera in from second base, it's going to have to be something that the outfitters have to move for. And when I say move, I mean laterally to the left or the right. Anything straight at him is going to be a tough call for uh, Tom Brookings, who's occupying that third base coaching box. Time called now as Zunino heads out to the mound to chat with Saunders, who gave up the 2 0 walk to Miguel and the single to Fielder. It's one of the things that makes coaching third base so difficult in these decisions. And not only with Miguel, but just about any of your base runners out there, you have to know their speed, what kind of jumps they get, the outfielder's arms, who's coming up next. I mean, there's a lot of different things to go into you know, some of the decisions that you make. Two and all the count. A healthy Miguel Cabrera would be no problem for Tom Brookins. He has told us on the regular that Miguel has some of the best base running instincts of any player he's ever coached, although not the fastest. Great instincts. Martinez sends a ground ball. Inside the bag at first base. Here comes Cabrera lumbering around third. He will score. Ball is bobbled by Almonte. Fielder goes to third, and the Tigers have the lead. Martinez comes through again. Saunders put himself in that situation by pitching around Miguel Cabrera, but you really can't fault him for that. Give Victor a lot of credit. That is a 2 1 pitch. That is off the plate outside that Victor simply took what was given to him and Almonte had to range far to his left in right field. Therefore Tom Brookins sent Cabrera home. And Rick Porcello watches eagerly on the bench knowing now that the Tigers have the lead and he has a chance to get a win here tonight. Unselfish at bat most guys that do the damage with the bat that Victor does if they get themselves in a 2 1 count they're not trying to trickle anything down the right field line they're looking to hit a gap or somewhere. This all started with Saunders pitching around Cabrera he walked him with two outs. And so fielders at bat key here he singled the left field to bring up the right hander Martinez who delivers kept the line moving uh, did Prince Fielder. Well Helmson now starting to warm up in the. Seattle bullpen Tom Wilhelmson. He was closing last time we saw them in uh, April. He, he was lot nasty. He was nasty. Here is Infante. Might as well pile on now. Omar trying to drive in another run. Has a double and a strikeout in this game. Good fastball count here for Omar Infante, but doesn't mean he's going to get one. Everybody in baseball by now knows he clobbers fastballs, but they're going to try to go inside with one. Uh oh. Ooh, he clobbered that one. Oh, did he hit it hard, but he pulled it foul. That boy doesn't miss his fastball. One ball, one strike on Infante. Good located pitch, though. I mean, they got it in there. 
Omar got out in front of it because he knew he was going to get the heater. A lot of times Saunders likes to follow that up with that real good arm side fade changeup. Two on one to Cabrera got it started. He comes around to score the go ahead. Line drive to left, base hit, get another one in. Fielder scores. Infante has his second hit of the game, and the Tigers lead three to one. Saunders threw one fastball inside to Omar Infante, and he hooked it foul. So he thought Omar was looking for something soft. He thought maybe he could try to get inside with a fastball. He doesn't quite get it where Zunino, the catcher, wants it, and that allows Omar to rip that ball to left field for the third run of the game for the Tigers. All of this with two outs and nobody on. That's why Ned Yost, who was here uh, just a few days ago, talked about how difficult it is sometimes to walk Miguel Cabrera, whether you're doing it intentionally or whether you're doing it unintentionally because you have the guys that back behind him that are such professional hitters but it's the one guy that you can't sleep at night if you allow him to beat you but you can sleep if the other guys beat you but you can't sleep if you allow the best hitter on the planet to beat you meanwhile Eric Wedge now is going to go to the bullpen well Helmson will be coming in and Saunders who is cruising along here with two outs nobody on is going to be lifted from the game It'll be a wall side windows pitching change here at the ballpark. We'll step aside. 3 1 Detroit. Fan poll question of the game. Here it is. Of these four, which young team in the major leagues do you think has the most future potential? Is it A, the Astros, B, the White Sox, C, the Marlins, or D, these Seattle Mariners? Text Ace, then a space, then A, B, C, or D to 37338. Oh, that's a tough question tonight. I, I have no idea where to go with that. I might go with C. Which one? C. Who was that? Marlins. Marlins. Yeah, they got a good young player. How about the. Saunders, he's a little bit upset. Right? A little flippage, a little snappage. Get out of the way, everyone. There goes the water bottle. Here comes another one. It's a kind snap, though. What else he got? Might as well throw that towel, too. Tom Wilhelmson is on now for Seattle. And a 393 ERA for Wilhelmson. 30 walks, 39 strikeouts, and 50 and two thirds innings. He got off to a fabulous start this year. When we saw him in April, he was. Closing for the Seattle Mariners, and I mean, he was doing it with a heavy dose of power fastballs. Don Kelly pinch hitting for Tuiasa Sopo as Leland counters the move. Two runs in for Detroit, and it's foul down the third base line out of the reach of Seeger. Well, Helmson, his fastball will get all the way up to 98 miles an hour. He's got a curveball that he really likes as well. He throws that about 26 percent of the time. And he also has a changeup, circle changeup. 
One ball one strike on Don Kelly. Ground ball to first. Smoke bobbles it. And now he'll flip to Wilhelmsen for the out. Box me up a crate of those. Tigers able to get two runs. All start with a walk and then hits by fielder Martinez and Fonte. Central American League Division Series games at Comerica Park go on sale tomorrow at 12 noon. For tickets, visit Tigers.com. Postseason right around the corner. Tigers trying to get there. And they have taken a 3 to 1 lead now. This is Porcello's game to win if the bullpen can hold it as we go to the seventh. New pitcher on now is lefty Drew Smiley. Yeah, Drew Smiley threw a wild pitch in yesterday's game, coughed up the lead. Max did not get his 20th win, but with the Avila home run in the bottom half of the eighth inning, Drew Smiley ran his record to 6 and 0 oh this year. Tuiasa Sopo is out of the game. Don Kelly pinch hit for him, so he will stay in the contest and play left. Number nine hitter Carlos Trienfeld will lead things off. Trin fell Ackley and then Almonte. Drew Smiley goes to work as we start things off here in the seventh, and his first pitch is in for a strike. Tigers have three runs, seven hits. Seattle, one run, five hits. Drops down a bunt right back to the mound. Smiley throws him out. And fellows now 0 for 3. Top of the order now, Dustin Ackley. Singled way back in the first, otherwise, a ground out and a strikeout tonight for Ackley. Smiley throws the strike 0 and 1. Porcello goes the first six innings tonight, strikes out 10. Now it's up to the bullpen to get him his 13th victory of the season. Alvarez the lefty Albuquerque the righty. Here's the 2 1 pitch lifted back out of play 2 and 2 on Dustin Ackley. The second overall choice in the 2009 draft at a University of North Carolina where he 
Went to the College World Series three consecutive years. He was an absolute star at North Carolina. Three and two. That was back when North Carolina, boy, they had some impressive runs going to the College World Series. Sky is this one to center field. Jackson coming in. It'll be routine, and there are two gone. Seattle Mariners could be a difficult team to match up with if they had some guys that were having better years. They have four switch hitters in their starting lineup, so that always presents problems for the opposing manager when deciding who to bring out of his bullpen. But he chose Smiley to turn some of the guys around to the right side where they don't have as much success as they do batting left handed. So here is Almonte who homered back in the third and to this point the only Seattle run that's had the game at one at that point. He's one of those switch hitters. Also had an infield single back in the fifth inning. Here's the 0 1. Seattle's had some opportunities tonight. They have stranded a total of seven runners in this game. They had two on in the sixth inning, but Porcello got strikeouts of Zunino and Franklin to close down that frame. Now the outer edge is strike one and two. Monte this year between double A and triple A hit 300 stole 26 bases. Another one bounce again two balls two strikes. And he also hit 15 home runs. Trying to get it to the on deck hitter Kyle Seeger. Swing and a miss, and Smiley has himself a one, two, three, seventh inning down and over they go. Now time for the seventh inning stretch presented by Help Plus. Top of Seattle three to one is a play in the bottom of the seventh inning Rick Porcello what a night tonight he punched out 10 in this contest his second career 
Ten or more strikeout game. And let's see, Infante two out of three, double an RBI. And Victor had that big go ahead single in the sixth inning. And because of the uh, double digit strikeout performance tonight of Porcello, he lasted uh, just six innings in this game before the pitch count got him. Avila tonight is 0 for 2, strikeout, reaching on a fielder's choice in the fifth inning. And Will Helmson deals a strike. The former closer for Seattle, Will Helmson had 29 saves last year. He'll bring home the 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball dives in for a strike. 95 with the first fastball to Alex Avila, and he backs that up with a 77 mile per hour breaking ball. Will Helmson this year 24 saves before giving way to Danny Farquhar, who is their closer now. And that one missed one and two. Yeah, Farquhar, he was just a throw in in the Ichiro Suzuki deal, but now finds himself pitching some valuable innings out of. Uh, that M's bullpen. Here's the one two. It'll get fouled down the left field line. Big day for Avila uh, yesterday. He homered his very first time up off of Jeremy Guthrie and that gave the Tigers the lead. That was the second inning and then he did it once again. Guthrie was still in the game somehow and Guthrie took the loss. That was a breaking ball. The first one was a fastball. The second one was a slider. Not sure which one I was more impressed with going the opposite way to get one out of this ballpark or hitting one where he hit one that second time. He's hit five huge home runs this year. I mean, huge home runs. He has just grilled Will Helmson and will have himself an infield hit. Leadoff single for Avila, and they'll check on Will Helmson now. Here's uh, some of those big home runs that Avila has hit this year. You can decide which one you think is the biggest. It started against Jose Veras. That was back in Houston to begin the season. The date was on May 3rd. And then he did it again June 1st at Baltimore. That was the third of three consecutive big flies by the Tigers. That one there, that was a granny against Strasburg, one of the best pitchers in the game. And then he did it at Cleveland against Perez. And then yesterday we just showed you Jeremy Guthrie. All of those home runs, huge home runs for the Tigers. Well, the one that he hit against Cleveland might be the biggest of that bunch that you showed, but the one that he hit against Strasburg, when you turned Strasburg around for a grand slam, to me that was electric. It was nice. And the one, of, well, the one against Perez was huge because the Tigers were looking like they were going to lose the first game of that four-game series, which they eventually went on to sweep. But had it not been for that big hit by Alex, who knows how that series would have turned. Yeah, there's no doubt that was the biggest. Avila hitting 313 in the second half. Well, it took him a while, but uh, apparently Will Helmson will stay in the game. He was smoked. Uh, he was hit so hard that uh, he didn't even try to get up to find the baseball. Usually you see pitchers get up and try to alert where the ball is. He was in pain. Now Iglesias. Double play ball his last time up. Showing bunt, drops it down. Will Helmson. They'll throw him out. Sacrifice advances the runner. The one constant with Avila lately, and we put up some numbers earlier, his second half numbers, he has been catching that ball out in front. His hands are working very efficiently for him. I mean, they are lightning quick. Tigers trying to get an insurance run in here as they set up Austin Jackson. Who was hitting at a 330 clip over his last 24 contests. Got another hit tonight. He's one for three.
will shoot that one foul down the right field line. One ball, one strike. Oliver Perez and Carter Caps in the Seattle bullpen loosening. Here's the 1 1. Bouncing ball to third. Seeger will check the run. Jackson is out two away. So it's going to take a two out hit. Tory Hunter, and he's just the man to provide it. It's one for three tonight. Single and a run scored. Tory trying for his 51st multi hit game of the year. As you check out the Tigers' box score. Swing and a miss. Well, Holmeson went from closing games being sent down to the minor leagues. He was back in early August. Ground ball foul, third base side. Told you earlier that they're, they're starting second baseman when the season began. Also, Dustin Ackley, who's now playing center field, also sent down to the minor leagues uh, this year because he was struggling. And Jack Zarensic, their general manager, uh, he's in the last year of his contract, as is their manager, Eric Wedge. Bouncing ball back up the middle into center. That's a base hit. Avila coming around third, he'll score, and Torrey gets another RBI. Well, Helmson has got to be kicking himself for giving Torrey Hunter such a good pitch to hit. No balls and two strikes, but that's exactly what has happened a lot this year with Torrey Hunter because Miguel Cabrera is batting right behind him. Gets lots of good pitches to hit with runners in the scoring position because pitchers are reluctant in the walking game. So Hunter gets another multi hit game his 51st of the year. Climbing back toward 300. Tigers manufactured that run. Bunt, sack, base hit by Torres with two outs. Balls, no strikes now on Cabrera, who was walked with two outs and nobody on in the sixth by the starter, Saunders, and that turned out to be his downfall. The Tigers have done a very nice job overall this entire season at scoring runs after two are out, and three of the four they've scored tonight. Well, you got it. Two outs. Sends that one foul back into the seats. Two and one. Tigers have four runs, nine hits. Seattle a run on five hits as Jose Veras now loosens. The eighth inning will be his. Ball low, three and one. Will Helmson started this year by recording 11 consecutive saves. This fielder waiting on deck. Going to die in front of the warning track to end the inning. Tigers get another run. Seven innings in the books. Tigers showing some defense tonight. Rick Porcello has been outstanding and some run support as well.
Four runs, nine hits. Detroit a run on five hits for the visiting Seattle Mariners on a nippy night here at the ballpark. Tigers trying to get a little bit closer to that Central Division crowd. They came in with a magic number of nine. And Torrey Hunter knocking in another run in the seventh inning to make it four to one. Meanwhile, Drew Smiley will stay out there as we check out the Central Division standings. Cleveland down five. KC down eight. Cleveland right now, I think, uh, more focused on the wild card, which they're a half game out of, or at least were coming into play tonight. Seeger will lead it off the left handed batter, so it is Smiley still out there after a 1 2 3 seventh. And it's in for a strike. Seeger has a walk tonight, otherwise, 0 for 2. Ooh, he tried to hold up. That was not a good looking swing. Looking fastball, good breaking ball by Drew Smiley, and it had Seeger out in front of it. Go a couple different ways here. You can elevate out of the zone at about 93, make sure you get it up, or you make sure if you bury that breaking ball, you get it down and away. Buried it down and away, but in the dirt. One and two. Jim Leland. Jeff Jones feeling good about it right now as we play in the eighth three run lead. Hendry's Morales on deck. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Mariners are striking out bunches tonight. Well, we told you this might be a really good series for Tigers pitchers. They've punched out a bunch overall uh, this season. And Rick Porcello started the party with 10 punch outs and a beautifully located slider there by Drew Smiley. And the Seattle Mariners are challenged offensively. They are one of the poorest offensive clubs in baseball. 12 Tigers strikeouts tonight. Here is Kendry's Morales. He's got two of them. Tigers are going to break that record by their starting pitchers uh, that we showed yesterday since 1968. The Cleveland Indians and all the strikeouts they racked up. The Tigers are closing in on that mark. Ball low 2 and 0. They had to average about five per game. We're well over that tonight. Here's the 2 0. Fly ball, right center field. Jackson Hunter, it's Hunter. Two outs. Five in a row retired by Drew Smiley out of the Detroit bullpen. And now Ibanez. Five outs on 21 pitches, so he's doing it efficiently as well. 13 of the 21 have hit the strike zone. Tigers pitching tonight, allowing just five hits. 12 strikeouts, one run, that's it. Ibanez hammers one toward left center field. That's looking like trouble. That ball is way back, and it's going to go up against the wall. Ibanez will head to second with a two out two base hit. And I told you earlier that even at age 41 Ibanez has no difficulty catching up to good fastballs. Uh, that 1 0 fastball was at 90 miles an hour. He went down to get it and hit it. Right in between Smiley excuse me Kelly and Jackson. So here is smoke now with two outs and with the lefty on the mound he'll bat right handed the switch hitter but he's just 179 from the right side. Todd Helton a talented first baseman of the Colorado Rockies announced that he was going to retire after this year is over. I would, have you heard anything on Ibanez following this season. Nope. Uh, heard Kotze as well calling it quits Mark Kotze. I've not heard about Ibanez. He is right now he's sitting on 298 home runs. And obviously he would love to get to the 300 plateau. Doesn't look like he's slowing down. Smoke on base twice in this game. There's a ball outside.
single and an error. One and two. Four to one Detroit. We're in the eighth. Ibanez is at second with a two out double. Way inside, almost hit him. Now double by Banya is only the sixth hit tonight for Seattle. And now Smoke will step out. And the 2 2. Drilled foul. Well, there is uh, the news on Todd Helton, who officially announced his retirement. Pirates have won six of their last seven, tied for the Central Division lead now. Todd Helton, with 2,505 hits, will never ever get the credit that he deserves because he played in Coors Field in Denver. Buckles coming back off the DL for Boston's big for them. There's a ground ball, base hit left field. Here comes Ibanez rounding third. He will score. It's a two out RBI single by Justin Smoke. And now it's a two run game. A couple of two out hits, and here comes Jim Leland. And the skipper has made the call to the bullpen. Seeing eye single for Justin Smoke, who went down to get a pretty good pitch thrown by Smiley. Iglesias nor Cabrera could get there. Smiley retired five straight, but now he comes out of the game and will be back. Now it's four to two back here at Comerica Park in game one in this series. By the way, here is your chance to win an autograph Justin Verlander or Nick Lidstrom life size bobblehead during our tin can auction. You can purchase two for five dollar raffle tickets at any game or any time prior to the end of the third inning at gate D tomorrow for the ball game right here at Comerica Park and all proceeds will benefit the Boys and Girls Clubs of Southeastern Michigan, the Detroit Tigers Foundation, the Red Wings Foundation and affiliates and village charities and now Jose Ferris will take over for Detroit. He's done nice work since putting on the Tigers uniform. Here are his overall numbers combined between the Houston Astros, where he had 19 saves. He has a 
couple of saves with the Tigers. The whip just a shade over one. And the one thing in the one area that Jose has really improved this year, it's the base on balls. Just 21 of those this year. Michael Saunders is the counter move to Veras. He will pinch hit for Zanino. And Veras missing outside with a fastball 1 0. 4 9 and 1 for Detroit, 2 7 and 1 for Seattle. Saunders batting 232. 290 though in his career against Detroit pitching. Saunders can do a lot of things on a baseball field. He can run, he can throw, he's a good defender. He's got a little pop in that bat, but the batting average at just 2-3-2, two, two, so uh, that is one of his tools that really hasn't caught up yet. He was just one for his last 11. Here's the 2-0. Saunders this year has had three pinch hitting opportunities. He is one for three. Smiley retired five straight, then gave up the double to Ibanez and the RBI single to Smoke. Big swing there, two and two. Now Ferris ready with the 2-2. Two -two. It breaks inside 3-2 now, which means with two outs, runner is on the move. On deck, Franklin. Hunter goes and a drive in the air to right field straight at Torrey Hunter and that'll end the inning. Barris gets it done. One run on two hits. One man left. Bottom of the eighth coming up. The game ends. Stay right here on Fox Sports Detroit. Mickey and Craig Monroe are in the Call Sam Studios. I will be working the clubhouse, trying to get all kinds of interviews for you. I'll be talking to Jim Leland, and hopefully, if the Tigers win, I'm going to try to snag an interview with.